Welcome to another episode of The Closest Club. Today I'm here with Jacob Sun on location at one of his recent fix and flips. How you doing today, Jacob? Pretty good, how are you? I'm doing excellent, man. Thank you first and for foremost for having me and my team here today to check out this amazing property that you guys just finished. And I really just wanted you to share who you are, where you're from, um, give us a little bit of your backstory. Yeah, so I'm originally from Beijing, China. Came here uh, when I was 16 for high school, started in Columbus, Ohio. And wow. you know, fortunate enough to travel and live in several different states. Uh, went to University of Michigan for, for college and studied civil engineering. After that, got my first job as a uh, building model, modeler in New York City mm. to work on skyscrapers. So actually, that was my dream. It was like a dream come true to work on skyscrapers. And then I was there for about a year, a year and a half and came to Boston to reunite with my wife and settle here ever since and get a job as a structural engineer. So for the past seven years or so, I've been working on, uh, you know, designing structures, renovating existing structures for commercial buildings, mostly in the uh, life, life science and lab office type of structure. Um, so yeah, so and recently decided to transition to real estate and this is my first project and we got it done pretty quick and so beautiful man yeah. thank you first and foremost for sharing your story there that's an amazing story so all the way from beijing to yep. boston yep yep and, Se and several stops in the middle several stops in the middle correct yep. correct man so full-time right now you're a structural engineer you're making the leap into real estate full-time when did you know you wanted to become an entrepreneur well, it's about probably a, a year ago. So I turned 30 last year. And then one of the wish I made was like, okay, I want to make a change that will, will change the rest of my life. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, engineering, I love engineering. It is a very rewarding career. I see my big buildings being built every once, two, a couple years. And that, you know, feeling is incredible. Uh, and I also like to think I'm you know, pretty good engineer as well. But there's also on the flip side, right? There's always the stress and deadlines, uh, that component. So I decided, okay, I think I want to stay in this industry, but have more freedom in terms of lifestyle, work-life balance, and also, you know, the, you know, financial freedom as well. So I made that decision about a year ago. I just started learning, uh, reading books, watching YouTube videos and that's how I find you your YouTube Absolutely. and you know you share all your wisdom and experience and that's how we how I got connected with you um, and thank you for finding this project and no so, problem yeah, my pleasure you, you man. get me started into this game excellent so you started your journey as an engineer realized you wanted to be an entrepreneur and decided instead of starting like an engineering firm you wanted to start a real estate development company, investment and development company. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I wanted to start something small first, just to get my feet wet, to learn the process, to build relationship with lenders, contractors, investors, to build my network first. And because I have a background in the structural engineering, and then I've been working in this space for, for seven years now, and eventually, you know, I want to move to something bigger and bigger and maybe to the commercial side. Beautiful, man. I love that. Yeah. You know, a lot of folks who watch this podcast, they have nine to five jobs yeah. and they're trying to make that transition. Jacob, what's giving you the courage or what gave you the courage to take that first step? Because it's not easy, right? Like to leave a stable job, stable environment yeah. to being an entrepreneur and basically living deal to deal initially until you kind of build the foundation. Uh, what gave you the courage to do that? Well, you know, it is hard. It's hard. Like I think, you know, like you know, engineer it is a good job, and uh, it can pay pretty good. And then people stay in the job for for a while. They can have a pretty comfortable live uh, living. Um, personally, I think I'm. I like to take risk sometime. I think ri risk also rewards big at the end sometime uh, if if you work hard. And for me, you know, I always like to build things. Um, and I believe if I learn as much as possible and then I don't think I'll ever get ready, you know, to take that first step, you just have to do it, you know, take yep. the action and, and learn the process while doing it. Um, and eventually you just be good at it. 
you know, each, each, each project is going to get better and better. Like this project, I learned a ton. I, you know, I probably have a two dozen things that I could improve for my next projects. You know, I just, you know, I know I will get better and better. Right. And I, and also with the support with, from my wife and then friends around it. And then people like you support, you know, me that make, that make things easier and to, to jump on something different. I love that, man. Yeah. It sounds like a big part of, you know, your success is, again, you started, stated you had the courage to kind of just get out and do it despite the fear and then having that support for and friends and family. Speak about that a little bit, because I think a lot of folks out there may not have that type of support, but there are definitely people out there, lenders, attorneys, real estate professionals, even if you don't have the family behind you that can kind of support that, correct? You Do you agree with that? Do you think that's a big part of you know, you building a team to really make this happen? Absolutely, I'm mean, team is so important in, in this, in, in real estate, relationship is important. You know, I, I think I'm pretty lucky to, uh, to meet a lot of, you know, my team members, uh, like my, my realtor, I, I met her at an open house. When I first started, I just, you know, start seeing, go to open house and then she, she was there and then she say, I'm actually, uh, used to develop houses nice. and then you know we got connected and she been very important to me she gave me a lot of referrals uh you know like contractors that she had used in the past and she referred to me and i used them they're they're great they're reliable they have been tested uh, gave very reasonable price uh, and you know and also i have very lucky to have my wife to support me you know she She's a different, uh, she's in different industry, um, but she does, she like to does, uh, she like to do a lot of DIYs mm. and design things. So a lot of, you see those lights and the yeah. colors. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's her design. She did an awesome job. Yeah, so um, I deal with contractor building departments and she does a lot of, you know, the, the tax and financial and some of the design. So it works out. Um, so yeah, so I think I'm pretty lucky to have family support, friends support, you know, and get to know people um, in the industry. Love it. Yeah. Yeah, your agent's name is Christy, correct? Christy Z, is that who it is? Christy, yeah. Christy yeah. Z, I saw the sign on that. She's excellent, by the way. I've met her many times over the years. Oh, great, okay, yeah. Yeah. awesome. Absolutely. So where would you say, Jacob, your motivation comes from? Because a lot of people, you know, sometimes they have a thought and it's hard for them to bring that thought to life or bring it to reality. Yeah. Yep. Have you always been a go-getter? Is it something you developed over time? Now speak about that a little bit. Yeah, so I, I have a pretty big dream that I want to achieve. So when I was in China, in Beijing, right? And that was during, before the Olympics in 2008, the city was booming. China economy was great. They're building all those skyscrapers to prepare for the Olympics. And, and I, I witnessed all those constructions. Mm. And that's how... Uh, it, it you know it made me wanted to study architecture or engineering. That's how I get started, because I said, like, oh, one day I want to build something like that. Um, Love that. So I came here, you know, to study structural engineering and hoping one day I will build a skyscraper. Um, you know, I went to New York City, uh, worked on skyscrapers for like thirty of them. Wow. Yeah. 30, wow. You did a lot of projects. In yeah. like in like a, a year and a half. So it was tremendous. <laughs> it, it was a it was a a tremendous experience just to absorb all those knowledge in that short amount of time. Um, and I came here. Um, there's not a lot of skyscrapers, you know. At least at least for the for the job I have now, we don't do a lot of very fancy and tall ones in Boston. But there's a uh, a hot topic right now about wood timber skyscrapers yes, called yes. a CLT. Absolutely, I've heard um, of this. You know, cross laminate timber yep. is is a big, uh, is a hot topic. Architects love it. And I think a lot of developers are thinking about it because it's more sustainable, reduce the carbon uh, footprint, and you know, make a positive impact to the environment. And it's, it's strong, it's lighter. So it's a pretty interesting system. So. My goal is, you know, <coughs> hopefully in five to 10 years, I can do something like that to build a pretty tall CLT building in, in Boston. So that motivates me. 
Um, so uh, like I said, I want to start small, learn all the process, build a relationship so I can do something like that in the future. Yeah, no, and, and you will, man. As we talked earlier today before we started filming here, yep. is we talked about commitment, right? I think yep. the key to coming up with a vision, coming up with a dream is committing to that dream and just saying, you know what, no matter what, I'm not going to quit until I achieve that goal. Exactly. And I can see that in you, man. Thank You're not you. messing around. <laughs> so I'm excited to see what the future holds for you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Excellent, man. We well, appreciate you sharing your story and your motivation and how you found the courage to jump into the fix and flip game as you're building your way up to commercial development and, and really changing the skyline here in Boston. Yep. 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 No problem. So let's talk a little bit about this project. How did you find this deal? I actually find this deal on Redfin, surprisingly. It's, it's, it was on market. Uh, my my uh, realtor, Christy, you know, was trying to find off-market deals as well for me. Uh, this one was on market. She actually found that on Redfin, sent it to me. Um, the thing, like, it wasn't a lot of competition because this one was not livable. Actually, there was a two fam existing two family. The previous owner lived on the other side. This side, they actually got it halfway. They were trying to renovate themselves, but run out of money. So it would be sitting here for like three years. So it was in pretty bad shape. There was no open house. So I said, okay, I want to take a look. And I came here and, you know, negotiate with the, with the previous owner. And then we got, we got this one. Love it. So this was an on-market deal. It was. Yeah. Whereas a lot of times people try to find off-market deals, but I think this goes to show you there still are good deals on MLS. Let me ask you this, Jacob. Did you have to haggle? Was it a bidding war? Did you lowball the price? What was your strategy as far as how you made your offer? Right. So first of all, I did my research to try to, you know, come up with a, the good comp. Um, very important. By, very important to yes. you know compare you know what other houses similar houses are so in the past like six months or so within like a mile radius, mm -hmm. and you know we came out with like five or six houses that you know have sometime little better condition than this one. So we adjust the price and then we made that offer to the to the owner. So we you know we have we 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 done our homework. Say hey, you know this is the house is so in this price and then you know we adjust it. And we negotiate like back and forth for several weeks, and you know finally we 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 get a deal. Nice. Now was it below asking or above? It was about ten thousand dollars below. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Good job, man. Yeah. Nicely yeah. done. Because right now in this market, a lot of times folks uh, end up outbidding themselves. Absolutely. And that's something that I think is very important for people to understand. Yeah. Beautiful. So as far as once you found it, you put it on the contract. The next step was the financing. Speak a little bit about that. Obviously, I helped with the financing here. My team and I at CrowdLending got this one done. Yeah. But how was how was that experience? Just speak on you know that process and how it was on your end of that. Because I know how it was on my end. Yeah. But it's important to hear it on your end as well. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, you guys, I really appreciate you guys helped me fund this product, get me started in this game. Um, you know, this this was not livable house. So the bank, I couldn't. The bank wouldn't give me money. So I have to either have cash of my own or you, you know, go find hard money lender. And I actually tried a couple and, you know, I like you guys. I decided to use you guys because, you know, just by watching your YouTube video, you, you share knowledge, you're trying to help people get into the game. And, and I appreciate that. You know, some of the other lenders I talked to, they, they kind of reluctant sometimes like because, oh, yeah, he's new, he's, this is his first product, so they might not be very comfortable with their terms, but you're, you guys are straightforward, simple, and made the process super easy and efficient in terms of paperwork, draw, you know, construct and draw, request, and all that. So, you know, it, it's great working with you guys. No, I appreciate it, man. Appreciate to hear it from your end of it because we enjoy working with you as well. You guys made it easy. Some borrowers, you got to chase them down to get the paperwork. You guys were on it. So it was a great experience on both fronts, man. Thank you. Yep. Beautiful. So the next milestone when it comes to the flip journey is managing the project, the day to day. What was your process like for that? Right. So like I said, I have a, uh, a full time engineering job, right? So um, but I also want to get you involved in the in the process because you know, originally I thought about doing a lot of work myself, mm. but I live in Arlington like 30, 40 minutes away. <laughs> I said, oh, and quickly I realized that's not possible, right? right so, yeah. so I had to hire a, a, a GC 
to do half you know so i found a gc and he has his workers to do a lot of interior renovation but at the same time i have several subs under me like all electrical hvac plumbing they're all under my um and they're referred by my my realtor christy so so i have you know kind of 50 percent uh, of involvement and then and then have the other 50 percent taken care of so i can have my full-time job and and also managing part of it in here um, it works out pretty pretty well but you know eventually i want to come here i want to switch to this like 100 percent so i want to be the gc kind of and then managing and supervising the, the, the entire process yep. uh, recently got my gc license so congratulations so um one more step closer yeah no that's great something i think that's important to know while we're talking about managing the project especially with someone who works full-time because that's a question i get a lot like how do i make that transition into real estate i have a very demanding full-time job i think you're fortunate and a lot of people out there may be fortunate this way but you work remotely now correct yeah yeah so since COVID, you know a lot of companies are pretty flexible with you know working from home um, my company they're they're pretty good with it and you know, there's not really a hard requirement that you have to go back because now you know COVID is gone um, they encourage people to to go into the office you know once or twice uh, twice a, to a week just to socialize and you know so people know uh, what you're doing um, but yeah like you know I stay home f for the most most part um, and I actually feel like it's, it's actually more efficient because I don't have to drive uh, every day save me like 30 minutes to an hour driving and I can get a lot of things done in that now one hour so I like it I like the flexibility um, if I need to go into the office I can go into the office so no that's great and I think for the folks who have remote work out there it's a great opportunity for them to be able to get their day job done so they can jump into things like this that really are in line with their bigger vision for their lives man right. so i appreciate you sharing that yep. i really want to now talk about the management of the project and the balance between your wife and you right mm -hmm. husband and wives my wife and i work together it was a bit of an adjustment how was that process for you guys how did you guys manage the process without uh, fighting or having any issues whether yeah. super smooth or how, how did that go pretty smooth I think you know we we like to do DIYs at our house right so you had practice we had practice before <laughs> you know so we have I think we have uh, you know I wouldn't say expertise but we have a pretty good uh, boundary like good. I you know for example I do a lot of the, the heavy lifting you know cutting lumbers if I want to build a furniture I do that and uh, she will do the paint I got she, it. She will, That's good. Yeah, she will do the touch-ups and yep. then do the design. So we, you know, but we, we talk to each other, you know, in trying to accommodate our own request. Yep. And same here, right? Like, you know, I, I manage my contractors. I deal with building departments, um, the design, uh, you know, the structural portion of it. And she does a lot of the financial uh, tax uh, accounting related stuff to make sure our business is running smoothly. So. Very important stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like communication is a big part of your relationship, not just for the construction, but also for your marriage. Absolutely, yeah. yeah communication, communication, communication is, is the key. Like, yep. In many things. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Yeah. No, man, that, that's very true. Let me ask you this, Jacob. Now that you've completed your first flip, you have this two units here. So we have two property, two sides, almost identical, a little different, but for the most part, similar. Yep. You've got one under. What would you say you learned? What was the biggest lesson you learned on this flip that you would have told yourself before you got started? Like I said, I probably have like two dozen of things that I can improve <laughs> on my next project. All right, you, you can say top five. I, I want to yeah. share some big yeah. ones. Share some big ones, please. Um, you know for your viewer if you're trying to get started in in house flipping yes in massachusetts make sure you know the energy code requirements mm, stretch that code. stretch code is super important right now massachusetts is leading the charge on energy saving yes and you know they're trying to decarbonize the whole state by 2050 and trying to be the you know the leader and hope probably many other states will follow Right. And those requirements are very strict. And uh, before I 
did this project. I said, okay, I can just put, you know, some windows from Home Depot and I can just do fiberglass installation. Nope, you can't. You have to hire a home energy rater to come here to look at, okay, what can you do to meet that requirement? Uh, and there's a score right now it's 52. The lower uh, the score, the better. So when I bought this house, it was 250. So, <laughs> so we made this house. a long way to go. And to get our, down to our final report, uh, we got a couple weeks ago, we made it uh, 250. Yes. So we made it five times more efficient. Nice. Which means we have to do spray foam insulation in all the walls, the roofs, uh, very super uh, insulated windows with the low U value. Mm -hmm. We gotta have very good uh, high efficient equipment, heating, cooling, uh, ventilation, all of that. Correct. Cost yeah. money. Yes. So I would say study that, uh, understand what's required and then budget appropriately. <laughs> because if you don't, it can, it can go, you know, it, it can destroy your your, <laughs> your, your budget. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, so I learned a lot um, from this project. The other thing I want to share is also related to energy code requirement is the air leakage. Yep. Um, uh, now all the new construction, they need to um, meet certain air tightness for the house. And for this one, it's 100 years old. And it's hard to meet the new standards, you know, for all the new constructions. And yes. then what they have to do is to do something called a blower door test at the end of the project. Yep. And if you don't meet that air tightness, you cannot meet your score and allow the city will not issue a certificate of occupancy. Correct. So that, yep. would, that would be bad. So when I did this project, I was like, oh, please, please, please. Got my fingers crossed. Um, my Raider, Hertz Raider came, did the border test. It was a little high. Everything was done. So it was a scary moment, but they were able to help me seal some of the stuff and to get the number down and to pass. Excellent. Uh, and there's new technologies now called the uh, aero barrier. Right, and before the installation. Before the installation, yes. yeah. you let them do that to see your whole house. Correct to get to the, the number you need so you don't have to worry about at the at end the of end. the project. You got it. So that's my two big things I wanna share for anybody who wanna get started, you know, especially in Massachusetts. I appreciate that because I'm building two new construction townhomes in Quincy as well. Mm -hmm. And we're pretty much through the rough phase of, of all of our mechanicals and electrical and framing, but we're gonna be doing the air sealing coming up with that the bar barrier so it's kind of like a, a little spray it just yeah it's mist it's a mist yeah it fills all the gaps yeah see all the little little holes yeah yeah no so we're, we're actually going through that process right now and i really appreciate you sharing that because i think it's important for people to understand that the construction industry is a dynamic industry it's always changing it's always evolving and we're in a world right now where sustainability and energy efficiency are paramount that's those are really hot topics that you know from the top presidential office all the way down to the local authority, local government yep. and city councilors, they're promoting it. And so as a result of it, I heard even the other day um, that in, I think, I forget what country in Europe, the European Union just passed a law that uh, climate rights are human rights. So if you're violating, you know, damaging the, uh, the climate or violating any environmental laws, it's a human rights violation now yep. for big companies, which is uh, pretty telling of where we are. So I really appreciate you sharing that. Yep. As a lot of uh, investors and, and flippers out here, I think are really gonna benefit from that. Absolutely, yeah. Fantastic, man. Well, thank you for sharing your journey on this first flip. Um, how can people connect with you? As you mentioned, you're looking to scale your business up. You're looking for your next project. Yep. So tell the folks out there how they can connect with you and uh, help you find that next deal. Yeah, so I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. So they can find me at, you know, Jacob Sun, PE, uh, professional engineer, um, or connect me uh, through my business email, sunnyhome uh, at gmail.com. So beautiful. You heard it here first, guys. This is Jacob, Jacob Sun's first podcast from Beijing to Boston, real estate flipper, developer, and many more to come uh, from Jacob. Watch him, reach out to him, and I really appreciate you guys tuning in today. Until the next time. Thank you, Jacob, man. This is great. Thank you, Robert. Great job, man. Thank you.